Okay, everyone, thanks for coming by. We're gonna start our painting, our drawing and painting of a beautiful angelfish. Just an exciting time to do the glazing technique. We cover the glazing technique constantly on my channel, as well as the alla prima method. So we cover all the techniques and methods you need for watercolor here on my channel, week after week, month after month, year after year. So please, uh, you know, consider subscribing on the right-hand side below. This way, at least you'll stick with us. You'll watch the videos, at least watch. Also work along with us as much as you can. I know everyone has busy schedules and so forth, but let's do this angel fish. We're gonna have a great time. We're gonna show you the glazing technique, which basically is, we'll cover the whole paper with beautiful washes of colors, oranges, blues, purples. And then once that dries, we come back in and we do our darkest darks here which are the stripes of the fish and the fins of the fish and the tentacles. And you'll just be amazed at how fun the glazing technique is. It really is just a great technique. You get your first wash on with the light washes of beautiful color, let it dry 100%. Then we go back over top and we do our darker darks in here and everything comes together beautifully once we do it in the glazing method. Okay, so we're gonna cover everything here you need to know. Um, and we'll uh, start the video in just a second, okay? See you in just a minute. Okay, so we just saw the finished painting and um, we'll just get right into the uh, nuts and bolts of what we're doing here. We're gonna do again the angelfish and uh, we're gonna use Arches um, satin paper. So you'll see that um, if you go online, if you decide you want to buy some arches paper, it's up to you. <clears throat> There's all kinds of great paper out there. There's all different types of uh, grade paper. There's student grade paper, professional grade paper. Um, so you use the paper that you're comfortable with for your budget and for your um, uh, your level of you know expertise with watercolor. So if you're just starting out, you know you maybe maybe you're not going to buy some really expensive paper. Maybe you will. I don't know. It's up to you. That's all up to your budget and whatever, so forth. But this one I'm using here is the Arches uh, uh, satin paper. It's hot pressed satin paper, 300 gram, 140 pound. And this is what the cover looks like. It's got a pink cover and uh, that's the identifier. So if you go to, if you just type in Arches paper into the internet, you look for the pink cover and then you'll know you have the exact correct paper you need. So it's color coded. That's why Arches is uh, brilliant. They make great watercolor paper and also they're brilliant. They set it up so you just look for the color Right away, you say, oh, pink, that's perfect. That is what we're looking for, the kind of paper. It's the satin, smooth, beautifully smooth paper, hot press paper. Versus if you, now if you were going for the um, rough, Arches rough paper that has the rough texture, that's the cold press, you'd see the orange cover. And that's when you want to do like landscapes. Well, it works great with landscapes and things like that. Um, so your rough paper is always the orange cover. So Arches, again, they use the color, a coded system for their paper so you can't go wrong as long as you're looking for the proper color of the cover of your paper you can't go wrong so for this painting we're using the pink cover which is the uh, satin paper the hot press paper and that's all you have to worry about and then you're good to go so we have that there and um, we're just going to start out again with a simple um, preliminary sketch and uh, what I kind of tend to do is if I'm going to do a preliminary sketch, you know, I'm not going to really drill in on the details of this. I'll just go with a very, very light basic concept and shape of what we're looking at here. So uh, I'm going to fill up the whole paper with this angelfish. I don't want to maybe create a small fish in the middle of the painting, like only this big, let's say like this big here. That would kind of just wouldn't look good from a, um, a design perspective. So with if you think of design with watercolor, with your drawings and with your paintings, is a lot of times if you're filling up your 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 rectangle. So we have a rectangle here. We'll just do a nice outline here. So if you have a rectangle like this, let's say you're just doing a fish or a dog or a cat or a cow or a um, bird, whatever it is. If you're just going to do like one of those. Uh, animals and for your painting, you chances are you're going to want to fill up your your rectangle with the f the subject matter, you know, for the most part, pretty large. Um, if you're doing a study on that particular uh, subject matter, if you're doing some 
cows on a field with a barn in the distance and a big sky in a beautiful western scene, well, you might not have to make the cow or cows really, really big. So you adjust it accordingly. But if, let's say, we're just going to do this one painting, we're just going to do a beautiful fish, one fish, like maybe swimming in the ocean, and that's all we're going to do is the one fish, let's just make it large and make it really interesting and fill up the, the rectangle here so that it's kind of, you know, we really have a powerful impact when the person, whoever's going to view our painting, whether it's ourselves or maybe some like a friend or family, or if we're putting our paintings into galleries or competitions or so forth, or if we're going to put them up for sale online. Uh, as an artist, you figure out all those things you have to figure out as far as how you're going to take your artwork and what you're doing uh, for your um, your path, your journey. But for right now, I'm just really just making the simple idea, like let's fill up the the paper with plenty of subject matter and this happens to be our angelfish. So I'm just going to do a real light sketch and you probably can't see it too much. I would say if I, let's see if I turn down my lights just a touch. If we can see the pencil line a little better, not really. So I'll just do a quick light sketch here just to get the shape of the fish. So I'm going to get the general idea of the shape of the fish. I'll do the body of the fish first. So I'll go quick here and do a preliminary sketch while you, you kind of watch what I'm doing here. I'm just getting the basic idea of the shape of the fish. I'm doing the body first and then I'll do the fins. So the angelfish has beautiful, long, large fins like this. And then one here like so. And then there's another one that goes off like this on this side over here. And then there's some edges there. And then there's some tentacles over here. And before you know it, we have the fish. And then we'll just kind of make sure we look at it and make sure we get the shape of it correct. So I'm going to do a little erasing. I use a, a kneaded eraser that doesn't create any crumbs. So that's always good if you have something that doesn't create crumbs. It's better when you're painting not to have crumbs on the paper. So we use our kneaded eraser and it works perfect. And then we're going to do our mouth for our fish here. So I just want to kind of get the mouth somewhat set good so that I can... And then there's some little barbs on the top here of the fish. Some scales and barbs. And there's lots of... Um, scales on this fish. So I'll just get the stripes on the fish. There's stripes on this one. Beautiful stripes. Two beautiful big prominent stripes. Like that. And then from there, a lot of it's going to be brush work. We'll, we'll do some detailed brush work with our um, needlepoint brush. So once you get the basic shape of the fish, you're good. So now I'm going to do a contour drawing, which is basically, I'm going to go over I'm happy with the shape of my fish for the most part. I might need to do a little bit of, maybe I'll do a little bit more. Um, I'll take a second look at my subject matter and just kind of make sure I'm somewhat close to where I need everything to be, which looks pretty good. And the fish is swimming through water. so. The fins and the scales and the tentacles, if they're flowing a little bit different than what you're seeing here that I'm drawing, you don't have to worry about that because it's in the water. The fish is in the water. And then I'll do the, um, the gills here. And then the eye is very close to the mouth, like so. And there's some stripes along where the eye is. And I think this looks fine. So this is going to look really, really fun. You're going to have a great time painting this. Let's draw it now. Contour draw it. Let me just contour draw this. I'll draw it in a darker pencil line. So you can kind of see um, how I do this. So I come across here. There's some tentacles and some um, barbs on the top of the fish and some scales. And then you have a long fin back here with a point. And then it gets a little wider here. 
And the thing is, if you can kind of let the pencil lines kind of flow a little bit, that'll look more realistic and, and fun and realistic as far as the fish goes when you're drawing the fish. Like if you just kind of let your pencil lines flow a little bit, that's why we do our contour, our preliminary sketch. So our contour drawing right now I'm doing is, I've already done the preliminary sketch, that really light pencil line, which you kind of can't see on camera, I'm sorry. Um, there's really no way I can really show you the con uh, the preliminary sketch because I'm doing it very lightly for that purpose of if I need to change it I can erase a few lines here and there and it's not going to look like I've done too many pencil lines and erased and more pencil lines and erased. I do that really light pencil line first which is the preliminary sketch. Then I go over the top with my contour drawing which is what we're doing now. So you kind of maybe at, at home where you're working at your studio, wherever you'd like to uh, set up your place you'd like to work, your kitchen table, your living room, your dining room, your den, your basement, your bedroom, however you like to work, wherever you like to work, your sunroom. You're just remembering that wherever you're at and you're working, um, you're going to be doing your preliminary sketch first to get your idea worked out. Then you go over with your darker pencil line if you want to. You don't always have to go over the darker pencil line. But I will do that here. So I have the eye now here. So I do the eye of the fish here, the angel fish, and the stripe along the head here. And there's the gills here. And there's a little bit of some dark shadowing. You can put in a little shadow with your pencil line if you like to kind of keep your, your, um, your design you know, if you want to think of it as your, your darker pencil lines might kind of keep you on course with your painting. So if you're doing your pencil lines and some shading, that can alert you to the fact that you want to make something darker. So you might shade an area if it's really dark, maybe like some, if you're going to do some dark black or dark tone, tonal value in an area, like a dark part of shading. If you just shade it in a little bit with your pencil as you're working and doing your final contour drawing, well then you'll, when you're painting, you won't be guessing. You'll say, oh yeah, I did that when I did my pencil drawing. I added a little shading there just so I know that I can make that darker and make that stand out a little more with some darker wash. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I can do this here. I can add some shading like this along where these stripes are. I'll put in some shading like that. Just to, we're going over with dark paint on that so you're never gonna see that shading I'm doing. And then here too, we have some dark. There's also a, a, a very, very thin line on the top of the fin of the fish, the angel fish, that's light. And then we have that darker shadow underneath. So I'll put that darker shadow there just to let me know I need to do that there. And then there's some darker colorations here, stripes. And they kind of fade out there toward the back of the fin. And there's some darker fins here too, or some darker parts of the fin here, some dark uh, coloration there. And then here too we have that, the darker coloration here, and then there is a lighter bit that goes along the side there. Okay, so I think this is going to be a fun painting, free painting. You're not going to worry too much about every detail. You're just going to go with the flow, have a good time with it. As long as we get the main idea. I think we do have the main shape of the fish pretty good. It's almost like a, um, almost like an oval shape for the body of the fish and then the tentacles and fins flowing this way with the water as it's swimming through the water. Um, I notice it looks pretty good. I might need to <clears throat> make the, I might need to make the, um, 
the top of the fish where the nose and the mouth are, just a little bit smaller, like that. That might look a little better. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so you can do a little minor adjustment here and there if you need to, like that. Okay, let's come back in just a second. We'll start painting this, and we're going to have a really exciting time painting. You'll find that um, this type of painting is, we'll use the glazing technique. So we always talk about that on my channel. The glazing technique is basically, we start out with light washes of color, and then eventually we build darker colors over the top of our light wash that we do. Usually our first glazing is the light wash, and we let that dry 100%. Then we go over with our darker washes, and we work from that respect. Um, so we're not uh, really um, getting confused with how, what style we're doing here. We're doing the glazing technique. So you'll see, we'll start off with our light washes first, let it dry 100%, and then we'll come back and do our um, darker tonal values, which are going to be the stripes in the body of the fish, the eye and the stripes over the eye, as well as the fins and the um, tentacles. We're going to do in a darker uh, wash and you'll see how it all comes together beautifully. So stick right here. We'll be right back in just a second and we'll start painting. Okay. All right. Let's take a break and then we'll come back. Okay. So we're ready for our next step. We're going to actually create some beautiful coloration for our fish. And um, I noticed there's some orange in my photograph. I have to work sometimes from um, photographs that are actually may be copyrighted, so I really can't always put them online. But angelfish, if you just type in angelfish, you can find probably thousands and thousands of angelfish online. If you were to uh, do an online search, there's probably thousands of books out there too that you can buy that would have angelfish. So, you know, your, your subject matter is, uh, you know, vast. You can really find this type of subject matter. Most of my subject matter you can, you can really find online. Uh, you know, very easily. So don't ever feel like you're kind of, um, you know, being held back or, you know, um, being stymied by um, not having the photograph on, on camera here. You can work from my finished painting too. So in the beginning, I put my finished painting, of course, in the beginning of the video. So you can hit pause and work right from the painting I have in the beginning of the video. Or you can also hit pause at the end of my video where the, you'll see the finished painting kind of coming to a conclusion. So always remember that. You don't have to be worried about things too much. So I'll start out with um, some orange with a little bit of purple. And uh, I'm going to do it very loosely across the, the body of the fish. I'm using a um, Princeton brush. And I'm just going to do like cross, cross strokes like this. Across the fish. And there's some lines like this. So I'll just kind of loosely paint in some fun brush strokes, just like this. Just to get that base of color on the um, painting. So you don't have to worry about being accurate here. You can let your brush strokes flow right off your fish and into the background. You don't need to be accurate as far as where you're for your first washes. And then we can go in and get some more purple over here and kind of do that warm and cool. And then add a little bit of water to that just to f make it smooth and uh, the, the wash smooth and seemingly uh, effortless and fun. Like so. Just have a good time with it. That's the main thing. Don't worry too much about accuracy here. You're just trying to get some wash on the paper, your first wash, and you're always remembering that you are trying to get some of the main coloration of the fish. Um, this beautiful angel fish, you know, you want to get the coloration, you know, somewhat accurate as far as, you know, getting some beautiful orange. You can add in some really, really, um, can add in some beautiful, really striking straight orange right from the palette. So you skip the wash over here and you go straight to the palette and pick up some orange. And this way you can get a couple little dabs of really exciting uh, color on there, here and there, just a little bit. And then maybe a little bit of red even. Let's go with a little bit of red just to give it some more 
So add some red a little bit everywhere that you put wash. A little more water. And again, we're just effortlessly putting on some washes here. Like this. There we go. And then some. And I'm following my brush strokes along where the the fish's fins are, so it kind of gives it a feel of the flowing water, like that. And you can even add in a little bit of blue here, just a couple little bits of blue, just a sparkle of color. Actually, sometimes color can be like a sparkle of light. You add a little bit of blue, like this. And that can be like a sparkle of light in your painting. And I had a little bit of uh, titanium white in my palette, so I don't think I want to go too opaque here. I don't want to use opaque paint so much. But if a little bit of Chinese white or something like that, or uh, titanium white gets into your painting, it won't be a terrible thing. It could be an interesting thing to see as it transforms and the painting comes together. All right, so there we go. Just some fun brush strokes here and there, and voila, you have it. That'll be our first wash. Let that dry 100%, and then we'll come back and we'll do our darks, and then that's we'll be actually done. This is actually a very quick painting that you can do within an hour, and you'll be amazed at the results. And then you can even do a little bit of um, splashing. So that could be from water, a little bit of splashing of water. There we go, a couple spots of uh, water. Adds a little bit of interest to the painting. Put a couple speckles up there, there we go. Okay, and that is really about it. Let that dry 100%, okay, and then we'll come back and we'll finish up. All right, so we just let our painting dry, our first wash. So you kind of get the feel for the glazing technique when you work along with me on my videos. I always mention that when you're um, painting along with me on YouTube, you'll get all the techniques and methods you need to really master watercolors. Um, it's not an easy medium, but if you're just painting along with me every week, and if you're not painting, maybe you're just gonna watch the videos. Watching is a critical part of uh, watercolor painting and mastering the medium of watercolor. If you can watch a lot of artists um, paint, you'll, you'll learn a lot just by watching and kind of carefully seeing how they're handling their brushes, their paints, their palettes, their mixing, all these type of things. You, you can't imagine how great it is just to watch videos. Watching videos is a critical part of watercolor. All I could go on and on about how critical like video watching is, but like all the great, let's just take professional sports for one example. All professional sports teams study films for hours upon hours upon hours in preparation for very important games as well as during their regular uh, competition in their seasons, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, uh, tennis, any think of any sport you can imagine. All the greatest top professionals in those sports um, genres study film a lot because when you study film you kind of see what's going on from like a perspective of sitting back and looking at it from a distance a little bit and if that's kind of the concept here is hey if you're not painting with us every week that's totally fine because i understand some of you are very busy you don't have the time always you have families and jobs and things like that you know you have a lot of important work you're doing and with family and 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 work and whatever you know things you're working on in your life and you don't always have time but even if you're watching the videos, it's a huge help. You'll really pick up a lot just by watching. You'll be surprised. It really is a big thing that I always advocate is at least watch some videos all the time if you can, if you don't have the time to pick up your pencils and brushes. So that's why I say, hey, subscribe below on the right-hand side. <laughs> You'll have a fun time watching my videos, at least. And then you can always, you know, when you have time, then you pick up your pencils and brushes and you work along. And I kind of keep it a step-by-step -step approach with some breaks in there so you can take a break and hit pause and, you know, um, work the same way I do. You take some breaks in between as you're working, you know, maybe you're going to break up your videos that you paint along with me over the weekend. So maybe you do the sketch the one day, if you have like a half an hour, then the next day you might work on a little bit of um, painting for like an hour 
Uh, so you'll you you know you can break your work and your painting down into segments like I do here, the same way on my video. And um, so I'm glad you're here and that you're painting along with us and we're having a great time and let's continue on here. So we did our first wash, of course, with a larger uh, Princeton and Art Brush Company um, square brush. And um, we're going to go right in and pick up some black, black paint <clears throat> from our palette here. And we're using the Extreme Beginner setup. So if you um, are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for coming by. Um, when I created the Extreme Beginner series, and I, I might say, by the way, if you're just starting out in watercolor, you might know that I have different videos on my channel. So sometimes I'll do Extreme Beginners videos, and sometimes I'll just do normal intermediate to expert level watercolor paintings on my videos. D you know, watch all of them, but if you're a beginner especially, watch all of them, but definitely... If you're an extreme beginner, you're going to want to really key in on the extreme beginner series because that's going to give you the palettes we use, the brushes we use, which are very, very, you know, inexpensive. So when you just start out in watercolor, you don't want to be going into all the minutia and details of what brushes to buy, what paints to buy. You need to focus on just getting some paints and a brush and a pencil and getting yourself started and have some fun with the, with the watercolor medium for like the first six months to a year. Just have fun with it, fool around with it, enjoy it. You know, then once you're, if you decide, you, hey, I'm really going to do this, then then you can start getting into more fancy brushes and fancy palettes and paints and all that. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. I mean, if you want to buy expensive tube paints and expensive palettes, that's cool, totally understandable. But if you're just starting out and you're not sure about whether you're going to stick with it, you get the easy going. 10 bucks for brushes, 10 bucks for a palette or a uh, Prang Oval 16 palette that you see here that we use on Extreme Beginners and you're all set. So I just wanted to mention that just as we're starting to paint here so you don't kind of, you know, get, you know, maybe off on a, off the beaten track on something that you might not want to. Like maybe you might have stumbled upon my other channel or not other channel, but my other videos that are not the Extreme Beginners. Those are a little more technical and challenging and difficult to paint, some of those. So, but if you start out with just some simple brushes and simple paint, Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set, you can get this anywhere online. Looks like this. There's different um, palettes that are the same company. You can get those too. Like, I think they have them in square, square boxes, like the square palettes. This happens to be ovals. You can get them in squares too. But these are semi-moist. That's the big thing, the big key. Semi-moist paints, you spritz them with a spritzer bottle and you're ready to go, like that. And then at the end, when you're done painting for like an hour, you paint for an hour. All you do is you just close up your box, put it to the side, done. You don't have to worry about anything. You open up your box the next time you're gonna paint, open it up, spritz it with your spritzer bottle and you're ready to paint. And that's it. There's no other thinking about it. You just spritz it and paint. Close it up till the next time, open it up, spritz it, paint. That's why this is such a great um, palette and paint set because it's real simple. No um, hassles. You just open it up, paint, close it up for the next time, and you're all set. The other paints are a little more challenging and difficult to work with, so you don't want to have that stress when you're just starting out. Hence, the... Prang Oval 16 is your, your like way to kind of simplify things. So here we go. We're just doing the stripes on the fish here. And you do it any old way you want to. And it gets a little bit lighter here. Take some straight paint. Some straight paint right out of the palette. Not even watering it down or anything like that and just put some straight colors in there. If you have to use a little bit of a tissue to blot up a little bit, you can do that too. Just to give it some variation. Maybe down here you can paint underneath here. Then you blot up a spot to lighten it up a little bit. Looks good. Um, we have some tentacles coming back here. We'll do some tentacles like that. Again, all about having fun. Have fun with this, okay? Don't stress over it. 
Okay, we have another stripe over here. And we said we shaded this in before with a little bit of pencil line so we know which area we're going to paint in these black stripes. And we just go straight into the paint. No need to water it down or add water to it. Just add straight paint. This one tends to be a little darker for whatever reason. And it's like that. Then I rinse off my brush. I dry off a little bit of water on a tissue. So my brush is just damp now. Then I go in and get a little orange and put a little orange in there. Paint, a little bit of orange paint in there. Like that. And let's start working that black right in over here. And again, I'm using my Prang Oval 16 paintbrush, which is a round brush. That comes right with the set. When you buy your Oval 16, Prang Oval 16 set, it comes with one brush just like this one, and you can do a ton of painting with just this one brush. So you almost, in the beginning, you don't even need any other brush but the one that comes with that set, and you'll be kind of fine for a while. That'll hold you over. Okay, and then you do another brush stroke here, just nice and easy, right along there, like that. And it gets thin there. Boom. That's good, look at that. Nice sharp point on this brush. And then, wow, look at this. We're going to have tons of little lines. There we go. Look how easy that is. And then there's a little bit of blue in there. Let's get some blue. Perfect. Now let's do another stripe over here. Black, straight black. There's a stripe on the fin back here. There we go. And let's do some very, very fine details here. Let's get that. All these fine lines in there. And you just Take your brush and just swing it on down. I'm basically dragging, sliding my hand along the paper. I have a large working table, I should say. I have a large piece of um, masonite board, which is basically you can get at any hardware store, big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot. They can cut it for you right at the store. You get maybe like a 24 by 36 uh, masonite board. Basically, it looks like, let's see if I have a piece here. Yes, I do. It looks like this here. So masonite board looks like this. This is the back of the board. The front of the board is kind of shiny and, uh, well, I can't see it from this point, but basically it's like a, a brown color board, masonite board. It's an eighth of an inch thick, one eighth thick. So you can kind of see how it's thick it is right there. Only one eighth of an inch. Right there, you can kind of see. It's only one eighth inch thick, very, very small amount, or, you know, like four millimeters or something like that, three millimeters. And uh, you just get them to cut it, 24 by 36. And this way, when you tape down your, you can use a lot of different things. You could use the back of a large watercolor pad. I've used that in the past. Um, so you could just have a working surface where at least you can have your hand slide off the paper like this and your and you're still on a flat surface, which is even with your paper. So I have my paper taped down with a large board, and then my hand can just slide off, and this way I can get these fine lines and just slide my hand uh, along the, the board. So my hand is actually resting on the board and sliding along on the board, just like this. Just like that. And you might find another, you know, find another way to do it. That's easier for you, and that's fine. I just offer my ideas the way I do it, and then you can figure out your ways, and it's all fine and good. So now we're going to actually get some more darks over here. For this fin down here, and it comes down like so. And it comes all the way down here like that, and like that.
and then it's a little more grayish there, so it's not quite as dark there. And then there's even a little bit of blue. So we go back to this blue over here that we have, which is kind of like a uh, French ultramarine blue. And we just add a little blue to that, just to kind of give it a little interesting uh, color. And then maybe here I added an extra tentacle or something, or fin, no big deal. That's why I always say if you can, try to really, when you do your pencil drawing, get a really good feel for what your, um, where everything is, in a sense, like your, your fins here, this is a fin here. This was just supposed to, uh, suppo this was just supposed to be a tentacle here. Somehow I got an extra fin in there and we'll just say, hey, this fish has an extra fin. Not a big deal. No one's gonna know about it except you and I. So we don't have to worry about that. Have fun with your watercolors. Don't stress over it. We're not creating a science uh, project where someone's gonna critique us or something like that. We can just have fun. And I'm gonna do these little sharp barbs up here on the top of the fish, those little barbs that, scales and barbs, there we go. And we're almost coming to a completion here. We've got lots of beautiful, and we got some stripes going this way too. Let's do those, fast, free, fun. We have some more going this way too, like that. And then more, this has to dry a little bit there before we do more details to that. Let's work over here. Uh, on the face of the fish. So here the face of the fish is the eye and the stripes around the eye. And they're basically dark right around the eye of the fish. Then I rinse my brush and dry off the water off the brush. Then I smooth it out and make it lighter. Like that. You see how I lighten that up? Just like that. That looks better, that looks good. Then we're gonna do orange. We see the orange and maybe a little bit of uh, red orange and orange for the eyes. This fish has some red orange and orange in its eyes. Like that. Then some dark black <clears throat> too around the, uh, the iris. That looks pretty good. Then we get some more dark our medium tone right there, medium tone, and we'll do some of the mouth. Like that. Just like that. And the nostril, like that. And a little bit more orange and red around the... Kind of let that flow together, like that. There we go. We're almost complete. Let's take another glance. Okay, I see what we need here. We need a little bit of this light wash, light grayish wash up here. And we're gonna do some scales. Let's do some scales. Very, very lightly, even dry off a little bit of paint off the brush onto a tissue. This way, when you start out, you have a, a drier brush so that you can kind of do some indications of scales like that. And it's not too dark and you're not putting a ton of water and paint on there, if that makes sense. So I'll pick up some more grayish color, tap off a little bit of the paint on a tissue off the brush. And let's continue on with the same thing. We're doing some scales here on the fish. Basically little small commas. You could think of them as a comma if you're used to English writing. Maybe in your different languages you might have different... But this is kind of seems very fun, very quick, very loose, right? I'm not getting too bogged down with details that are not going to really matter 
as long as I have that fish scale to kind of look, it's going to look good. It's going to read correctly. And it does. It looks good. So there we have it. A little more detail over here. Some more of our black. Dry off a little bit of the paint on the tissue. So we have just a damp brush with a little bit of black paint on there. Then we dry off a little bit of the paint. And then here we could do our uh, we can do our darker darks here. Actually, we could just go in like this and do this. Like that. And then we'll do this. Like that. Some quick brush strokes like that. And then over here, you can see there's fine lines. Like that. So I'm doing some fine lines like so. Like that. And I think that's perfect, everybody. Let's call this a perfectly done painting for what we're doing here. We're not trying to, you know, compete with a scientist who knows fish really well. We're just having a fun time doing a fish here. And it looks good. We're thinking of how fun fish are. They just float around in the ocean and swim and have a great time. Let's think of ourselves as fish sometimes and just have a great time flo floating around free and just uh, enjoying the, the ocean and the waters. I'll splash a little bit more here, just a couple splashes of paint to give it a little more fun feel to it. And that should be good. And we'll peel off the tape just to see how it looks with our border around our painting. I hope you'll try this at home, everyone. Please have a fun time doing this angelfish. Um, I'm using a, a book. I. I received from my brother for a gift for the holidays. So that's why I wanted to do work from a book that I have received as a gift to get my basic idea of my angelfish. And I think we had a great time doing this. It was a lot of fun and um, we'll see you on the next video. Okay. And always remember, if you like my videos, you hit thumbs up and the subscribe button thumbs up is just basically you're saying that you enjoyed this video, you think it's really good, and then I'll do more videos. If you have lots of thumbs up in the video here, I know you guys like this a lot. Everybody likes this. And then I'll do more videos similar to this one. And of course, if you subscribe below on the right hand side, that's just, you'll be you know alerted that I created a new video next time I make a new video, which is always every week. So we're getting together here every week here. So stick with us, have fun, learn watercolor. It's not that difficult. Just takes a little bit of time and we cover all the basics you need here on this channel so that you learn watercolor and uh, it's not a mystery anymore. You'll, you'll kind of see it, the basic fundamentals and, and methods and techniques that we use in watercolor are the same all the time. The only thing that changes is the subject matter. So whether we're painting fishes, flowers, we're painting buildings, seascapes, landscapes, we're painting figures, portraits, animals, dogs, cats, whatever it is, whatever we're painting, it's all the same. It's watercolor. We're using the watercolor methods all the time the same. Just the subject matter changes a little bit. And so if you stick with me again and you're watching the videos, even if you're not painting every week, at least watch the videos. You'll, you'll get a lot from it just watching. I've watched a ton of videos over my time in my art career, in my professional art career, and I'm sure you're going to actually uh, benefit by watching all of these videos constantly. And you search out other watercolor artists that you like too, and you watch their videos on YouTube and uh, you'll just be, you'll be benefiting incredibly, you know, well from, from doing that. Okay. All right. So again, stick with us here on this channel, especially because I know you really like my, my content. Everyone is coming back all the time. Lots of people are subscribing all the time on my channel. So welcome everybody. Thanks again for coming by. And if it is your first time, I really thank you for stopping by and watching my video. And I'm sure you're going to be really happy and pleased as you uh, come back each week to learn more about watercolor. And uh, we'll see you on the next video, okay? All right. Bye-bye.